I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape has many hidden and secret features. This tutorial, we can't really call it hidden or secret because it sits in plain sight under the text dropdown, flow into frame. What it does is you can take some text you have typed out if you select it, hold shift, and you can choose any object or what's called a frame in this case. Go to text, flow into frame, and it will adopt the shape of the container, which is simple, fine, but it allows you to do some more advanced design work, such as with this cat. So I've seen these images on like Nike ads. It's so easy to do. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how you can take any image and do this type of application. You could put something that's more meaningful than what I have in here. I wrote how to flow text inside a shape in an easy way, just like with this cat image. You could replace it with a story, maybe even a eulogy to your favorite favorite pet, anything you want to juxtapose the image with the typographic design. The first thing you want to do is find a source image. I chose this cat from rawpixel.com. It's basically a free resource where you can choose public domain images. I typed in cat black background and I saw our friend right here. You can choose the size, download it, and all you need to do is swipe it into Inkscape. The page border right here you see in white, that's the default, it's the A4 template. If you're on Inkscape 1.2, you can go up to this paper with the wrench, click on it, and you'll get your document properties. If you're in an older version of Inkscape, you can go to File, Document Properties in the dropdown. If I have my image selected, you see this choice right here, Resize to Content, click on that once, and it will change the page border to fit exactly our source image, which not only cleans up our workspace, it'll also make it very easy to export this thing out of it when you're done. Over here, if you're on the selector tool, there's directionals. I'm gonna flip it horizontally because I wanna use the bright half of the cat to make all those words. It'll just show up better than if you did the dark side. Next easy step, we'll go to the Create Squares and Rectangles tool. We wanna to block out the half that's gonna be replaced by text. Come right down the center, over the edge. I'm gonna cut it right down this feline's center line. It's eventually gonna be full black. A shortcut, rather than pulling up the Fill and Stroke menu, I can just click down here on my color ribbon to the black. That shows me there's a white stroke around my shape. If you hold shift and click the X, the none X, see that dialog box, none, that will take the stroke off. And in case it comes up in the comments, your ribbon may not look like this. Hit these three bars and there's all sorts of different choices. You can go to the Inkscape default, which gives you the rainbow. You can choose royal. These are all the presets. You can make your own. I'm gonna stick with gold. All right, next step, I'll go to Selector Tool. I wanna to take this black, we'll go to our hierarchy and drop it to the bottom. So it's still there, this is why I like my page border, and we'll make use of that at the very end. Now we can draw our frame or container shape. I think I will pull up the Fill and Stroke menu for this one, so go to Object, Fill and Stroke. I know it's gonna take the last thing we did, which was the black rectangle, so let's change that to something green. If you follow along on the channel, you know I like to use green for stuff that's throwaway. It's only gonna be used to create the frame and then we'll delete it. Go to Bezier Pen Tool. I'll start in the middle of the cat's head, click it once, and if I hold Control, that will lock in the vertical axis. So I can still swing the mouse around, but it's gonna to try to find that vertical very easily. Click again at the bottom, and now I can freehand it. I'll just take my shape around the edge of the cat, up in the ears, and back to the start. If you wanna fine tune your shape before you put text in it, go down to the opacity slider. Maybe we'll go to 60, 56%, go to edit paths by node. One trick I learned practicing this, you actually wanna have it go out a little bit past whatever the subject matter is, because the text isn't going to flow exactly to the edge, so I'm gonna bleed it out a little bit. If you've ever seen this technique in poster design, sometimes it'll have like actual information where half the face is the artist and then the other half is the concert date and information. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna write how to flow text inside a frame in an easy way, just like with this cat image. That will be our deep, meaningful message and I'm gonna keep repeating that inside of this container frame. If you wanna play along exactly, I'm using the font called Enter. It's actually a Google font. You can find it at fonts.google.com. It's free and the license is 
open font license, so you can use it even in commercial purposes, as far as I understand. Double check before you go big time with it. If you do bring in Enter, for the style I'm on heavy, the point size of your font might change based on the size of the image you're using, but I'm using just 10 point right now. And the only other modification I did was on stroke style. So I have the text selected. I changed it to have an additional width, a stroke width of 0 0.20 millimeters. I'll show you. If I take off the extra stroke around the text, you see how it's a little bit more narrow, but if I add it back in, it widens it and that's gonna help make the effect look better. So if you don't like enter, whatever font you choose, try to have it be thick and blocky because you wanna capture more of the underlying image. We're actually gonna clip it out and then drop it back on. It'll just look better the more actual text is inside of this. And I'll show you what I mean. I've already got the text selected. Now I'll select the container, which is just this green thing. Back to the hidden feature text flow into frame. All right, and you say, well, what just happened? It looks bad. That's because if I go back to my text setting, this right here is the space between the lines. So for some reason, the default is 10, which is huge. I wanna be under one, so I'll do 0 0.70, see what that looks like. Okay, so that's too tight. We'll try 0 0.80 and that's more like it. And there's two ways to fill in more open space. You could either change your container, but I do like the way the container is, or if you're on the text tool, make the font smaller. We'll go from 10 to eight. That's too small, we'll try nine. That looks good, now it's too tight, so we'll go to 0.90. Now it's looking good. See how it's filling in better? You'll play around with this to get it to look the way you want. And I think I will expand this ear a bit. Go to Edit Paths by Node, and I'll grab on the green. See that? When I pull the green, then it goes where it wants. So it will capture a little bit more black, but it'll look better if you have like the words flowing better. Let's continue. So I have it looking good the way I want it. I can then go back to my edit text tool. I'm gonna highlight it all. Do the old fashioned control C, which is copy. And now I will paste it over and over. Now, if you actually were going to put something more meaningful, you could write the whole text out, but I just wanna show you how to make the effect work. Okay, at the bottom, if I cut and paste one more, it's gonna bleed into no man's land, so I will not do that. I'll end with much love. At this stage, it should look something like this, where you have a hard line here and your flowed text on this side. Before you can actually do the stamping out of the cat, you have to have the text selected. Go to Path, Object to Path. That is very, very key. If you don't do that, it won't work, and it also will still be tied to the green framing shape that we made. At this point, we can delete it. And we're ready for the actual magic here. I'm going to click on the cat. So I have the cat selected. I'll do Control D, which duplicates it. And on hierarchy, I'll drop it down one step. I've got the text selected, hold Shift. I'll select the cat that's gonna be clipped, object, clip, set. And you see nothing, right? Because it's hidden, because it's sitting on top of exactly what we clipped. Go back over to your black rectangle we made in the very beginning, and we'll have that go up one step. And there it is. <laughs> I think we can fine tune it. Let's actually grab just the rectangle and come over a smidge. And we have it. There is our cat. I wish we did do something more meaningful than just the random text. You could do it. If this was your cat, maybe you would say something special to it. Or maybe you're not a cat person. Maybe you have a special dog in your life. Whatever it is, I hope this helps. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Suggestions, let me know. There's plenty more Inkscape to explore and let's do it together. So see you next time.